Well, good morning, Arborada. If you are in Wales and speak Welsh, it is great to be with you again. And can you believe we are mid-February already? And with some of us have had pancake parties this week and we're in a Lent series. And some of you well, on Wednesday have started our book that we're going through, 40 Days of Walking the Way, Apprentice to Jesus. And we're on day five. For some of you, you'll be on day four because you remembered on Thursday it was in fact Lent. And that will probably be someone in our house, possibly. Uh, but today we're looking at day five and we're in this series until Easter now. And it's a fantastic series about really being an apprentice for Jesus. And today we're looking at Psalm 91. So if you want to turn there, we'll go there in a moment. But we're talking about Psalm 91, talks about being protected. And uh, my question is, who are you or what are you protected by? See, I was a youth pastor for years and I was known for a little bit quite protective of my youth, but I was no more protective of my youth than when we were playing um, paintball, when we were doing paintball. And incredibly, I was always I was hardly ever shot at in paintball, partly because the rest of my team would always want to protect me because they didn't want to hurt the girl. Meanwhile, I would be the strategist in our hideout and my team had a way of protecting each other and we would normally win. I think I got shot like twice in all the times we did paintball uh, and one time I ended up with four guns at the end of the game. It was a, it was a victorious moment for uh, girls everywhere and uh, no one would shoot me and I'm stood there going, I'm the winner, yay! Because uh, I've been protected the entire time by two huge guys who I could stand behind. So they protected me. But then, you know, like life goes on, doesn't it? And you start thinking about being responsible and sensible and you start driving and you get car insurance and that protects you and you get home insurance and that protects you and then you get critical illness insurance and then you get pet insurance and then you get insurance and then you get insurance and there's so many things that were protected by in fact last summer we suddenly started saying these bizarre little phrases that we've never heard before hands face space that would protect us and if I, as i say it you probably are saying in your homes hands face space but that was a way of protecting us and keeping us safe wasn't it and we all now know that we can be protected or safer um, from the virus or whatever you choose to call it if we stay two meters away and at the moment obviously stay safe and stay at home oh sounds a bit like a government commercial doesn't it not a preach but uh, i assure you the bible is coming but uh, so we're going to turn this morning to psalm 91 i'm just going to read the first four verses but really focus in on verse 4 and it says this in Psalm 91 he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust surely he will save you from the foulest snare from the deadly pestilence he will cover you with his wing his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart do you know, one theologian describes this whole psalm as reminding us we come under the, the peculiar care, the peculiar care of heaven. And it is peculiar, isn't it? Because it doesn't always feel like, like it should. And somehow God protects us at times. And we just think, well, that was strange. How did that happen? The peculiar care of heaven. But today I want to look particularly at Psalm 91 and verse 4. And it says this, He will cover you with his feathers, under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. And King David writes this psalm. And King David writes a lot in the psalms of feathers and wings and being protected. And uh, that's not really usually what a king speaks of. But he's speaking of this protection. And you kind of wonder where he's got that idea from. And so I was doing a bit of digging. And this is a new thing for me. Um, potentially people you will have seen this before but I've never spotted this before until I was studying for this but back in the book of Ruth the more or less the same reference is mentioned that he's covered that Ruth is covered under his wings and I want to introduce you to Ruth for a few moments because I know for some of you you won't have heard of her before and some of us have done studies on her and Ruth is a Moabite woman who's in the Old Testament and Ruth is actually King David's great grandma and she is from a place called Moab and uh, she is having the time of her life this amazing attractive Israelite man and his family who are blessed 
They come to the land of Moab and are blessed people. It is going so well for them. She marries this new guy on the block. Life is good. She's going to have children. She's got the, you know, 2.4 children. She's going to have an amazing tent. She's got the whole thing planned for her life. And then disaster strikes and her father-in-law dies and both of the sons die. And because both of the sons die, Naomi can't bear any more children. Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law, so the hot guy's mum. And, uh, and she, married, she married him and now she's a widow. And the promise is gone. And, and she could, by right, stay in Moab and remarry and live happily ever after, maybe. We don't know. There's something about Naomi that Ruth decides she wants to stay loyal to. She's married into this family and she says, there's this, in Ruth 1, there's this scene where Naomi's saying, go back, go home, I can't give you anything. I've got nothing to live for, I can't give you. Your promise is dead with me. You're not going to have any children if you stick with me, kid. And Ruth says, your God and my God, your people, my people, where you go, I will go and it's this promise and she decides to be faithful to the promise she's made and walk with Naomi. So two of them walk on and then we get Ruth 2 and in Ruth 2 um, we read of how Naomi has said to Ruth, hey we need to find a way of providing and so Ruth goes and gleans and takes up um, like uh, corn and um, wheat from the, from the edge of a field. And Boaz, who becomes our hero of the story in a few moments, Boaz sees her and they begin to have a conversation. And in Ruth 2 and verse 12, this is what's said, and it's incredible. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, whose wings you have come to take refuge. Whose wings you will find refuge. Whose wings you have come to take refuge. Ruth didn't know God. She didn't know the God of Israel. She had her own gods, yet something in Naomi caused her to want to know the God of Israel. And she follows Naomi back to Israel, has a hard time, is probably getting sunburnt, is probably hungry, is probably broken, is tired, and has no dream left. And in that moment, in the doing, she finds the God who she can find refuge in. And that story will have been told because then what happens in the, in the story of Ruth and Naomi is Ruth then marries Boaz, he's known as a kinsman redeemer, they have a baby, a little boy called Obed, he's very cute. Obed, when he gets older, he has a little boy and he calls him Jesse. And Jesse, when he gets married and has a few children, he has King David. And so King David will have heard the story of his great grandma finding refuge in God in a time of brokenness. And King David knows this to be true. King David knows that God will be his refuge, he will cover him, he will be his protection. And what an incredible story that here is this lady who, who we, we kind of occasionally speak of, and um, we might have heard of, who is doing something really hard, who's not like a hero in, in that sense, you know, but in the middle of that, in, in the scary moment of uh, potentially she could have been attacked in the field and all sorts happened to her and actually Boaz says protect her, look after her. In all of that, Boaz sees that God has protect, protecting her and she's found refuge in the wings of God, under his wings. And this morning I've just got three simple points to share with you about being in God's refuge and under his wings. And my first point is this, take refuge and dwell. Where do you dwell? In Psalm 91 and verse 2 it says this, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Take refuge and dwell. Do you know, um, there's times when I visit homes and I just feel like I'm at home. Some of you may have heard me speak, I've got a friend who um, I affectionately call my brownie. I've got blonde hair, she's got brown hair. Um, so she is a friend who, and when I go into our home, it's my place, it's a place of safety. It's a place where I feel restored, a place where I can kick my shoes off, where no drawer is out of limits, where I can ask for anything, where I'm at home as I would be in my home. 
is my place of refuge, my place where I can dwell and be and plug and do whatever I need to do. I feel at home. I can dwell there. And God longs to that familiarity with you. He longs for you to be like, God, I'm in my slippers, I'm doing my washing, but my refuge, my place of safety is you. My refuge, my place of the place that I dwell, the place I feel most at home, the place I am relaxed in is you. Do you know, it's interesting that for me personally, one of the places that I dwell and find safety is the Bible. Is that if I'm having a moment of wobble, a moment of I don't know, then throw a Bible verse at me. Throw a, um, a little bit of the Bible at me. Let me sit and dwell in that. And, and how different it feels. I feel safe. That's my refuge, my place. Dwell in God. My second point is this. Trust God's protection. Trust it. We trust sun cream protection. Like, oh, SPF 50, be right. I'll be out all day, classic British. All day and burn. Trust God's protection. Don't run away from God's protection. Trust him. Do you know, there's so many times when I see people like, I trust this, I trust this, I trust this. It's all right, God, I've got it covered. If you've been in church in a length of time, we find it really easy to say to God, it's all right, I can handle this. I don't need your help with this one. But can I just say this morning, trust God's protection in the small things. Trust God's protection. Psalm 46 and verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in times of trouble. Ever-present. He doesn't disappear off somewhere else. He doesn't take a wander or, you know, have a, a sabbatical. He's ever-present and wants to hear your cry. He hears your cry morning and night. He hears you in those moments of frustration that maybe you're in right now. He hears you. Trust God's protection. Maybe in a job scenario, can I encourage you to trust God's protection? I once counted, I did 67 job application forms in a season and got not one job. Why God? Why? Because God was moving me to Prestatin. And if I had those jobs, I wouldn't have got to Prestatin. And when I got to Prestatin, I was offered some of those jobs back in Derby. Because you know what? It wasn't about that I couldn't do them. It's about that God had something else for me. Trust God's protection in every season and scenario of your life. He's with you. And my third point is this. Wait for the stories to come. As I shared earlier, Ruth is the great grandma of King David. Wow. Lineage. Suddenly the king of Israel is her great grandson. When actually she was a widower from a different tribe that wasn't even accepted by the Israelites. The stories of yet are yet to come from our lives. Wait for the stories to come because you have trusted and protected God. I am eternally grateful for a praying grandma who trusted the hand of God in her life. It's been incredible to see what me and my sister, especially how God has had his hand on us because my grandma has been a praying grandma most of her, well, our entire lives and even beforehand. But wait for the stories to come. Matthew 1, 5 and 6 says this, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Incredible story. If you've got time, go back and find that one. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse and Jesse, the father of King David. In a few generations, we've gone from a widow, broken, without a promise, laying her husband's body in a tomb, death to life, and leading a nation. Trust in the stories to come, church. Stay protected. Stay covered and protected by God. I get excited about what God is going to do in the lives of my children and my grandchildren because I choose the protection of God on my life. As for me and my house, we serve God. Wait for the stories to come of the faithfulness wouldn't it be incredible, church, if we were all known as people who dwelled in the shelter of the Most High in everything with 
confidence, knowing that there's stories to come, that there's history books to be written about those from, at the, from amongst us, those um, children, those that grow and rise up in church. Do you know, I love where it talks in the Bible about one generation will commend your works to another. And my heart is this, that until the day I die, I talk about God being my dwelling place, trusting God and telling the generations to come of the faithfulness of God in my life and what he's doing in their lives. My boys love to hear of times when God's provided for us as a family. They love to tell stories of what God's done through their parents, grandparents and great grandparents. Trust in the stories to come. This psalm is a little bit of a, it's going to be okay. And almost like a lullaby we would sing, you know, dwell with God, it's going to be okay. And that sense of rocking and lullaby. This is your lullaby. And this is your legacy. When I take a funeral service very often, people ask me to share part of what the person has left behind, the legacy they've left. And my legacy and my choice and my challenge to you is this make your life a legacy so that people see you dwell in the shelter you're protected by the most high and you knew that there were stories to come i am excited about the stories that will come out of last year as we walk together as church and i'm believing god for all that he's going to do during these 40 days but also what else he's going to do so church let's pray and just come before god before we come around the table today and just pray and that we would be people who take refuge in him. God, I want to thank you that you are our shield and our protector. God, you cover us. God, that you are not just interested in us, but generations before and ahead. God, we thank you for what you're doing amongst us in and through us. And we thank you for this series where we can just grow closer to you. God, we ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen. Thank you.